All right, so today I'm gonna to try to save a ball python egg that is really moldy, looking really bad. As a matter of fact, most people I think when they look at this ball python egg, they'd probably be tempted to just throw it out and get rid of it. And I actually tried to save this egg using springtails. It was the first time I tried springtails. And the problem is, is I just took springtails and I just dumped them right into my egg box with the water and the vermiculite. And I checked on them a few days later and it looked like all the springtails had died, which which is kind of interesting. So we're trying to put our heads together in the comments section. I know a lot of people are kind of chiming in, thinking why did these springtails die? And I think it was because they just dried out. There wasn't enough humidity in that egg box with the vermiculite and the water, just not enough water in there to keep them going. And other people thought maybe there wasn't enough air in there because you completely seal it with the press and seal. And some people also thought that maybe because it was 90 degrees in the incubator, Maybe springtails can't survive at 90 degrees. So I'm actually gonna try it again with the same egg with some different springtails and a different setup. So let me pull that egg out of the incubator and let me show you how bad it is. And we're gonna try our final attempt to save this really bad ball python egg with some springtails. All right, so let the experimenting begin. <laughs> let me show you how I'm gonna set it up a little bit different this time. So the first thing I did is I bought some springtails and I put them in the incubator for two days just to see if they would survive the heat in the incubator. So the first thing I wanna do is if these are all dead, <laughs> let me tell you, uh, we're pretty much dead in the water from here because uh, they don't survive, but take a look at that. Wow, it almost seems like they really multiplied in there. So if you look really close, uh, I can probably do a digital zoom and I can zoom in real close and you can definitely see there's a lot of springtails all over the top of that. There are tons and tons of springtails. And I was actually surprised at the price on the springtails. I think it was like $10 and something for a little thing of springtails like this. Made me think, man, I should be breeding springtails too, as well as my doobie roaches. So I'm glad the springtails are doing good. It looks like they can withstand the heat in the incubator. And kind of the bad part of that is while these were in the incubator for two days, this egg was getting worse and worse and worse. And I probably, should, well, I kind of want to do one thing at a time to make sure if the springtails died, then I know it was from the heat. Now we kind of eliminate the heat for the next time that I actually do this. So I'm trying to do the process of elimination, although it wasn't that good for this egg right here. And this egg was actually from my Coral Glow. I think it was a Coral Glow to, I can't remember what I bred it to. I'll have to go back and look at the breeding on this. Matter of fact, the, the label is on the side on this one. So take a look at this egg. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, it smells really bad and it looks really bad too. That is, whoo, that is a ripe egg. It is very colorful. <laughs> Take a look at that. You could probably have, uh, that'd be an interesting biology experiment to see all the different types of fungus and mold on a ball python egg. It looks like there's like 30 different colors on there. <laughs> it looks like, looks like a colored Easter egg, whoo. That thing is ripe. If that thing hatches, it'll be a miracle. But I've actually seen pretty amazing things with ball python eggs. And the fact that it still has some body to it, where it's not completely flat, there might actually still be hope for that egg, which is pretty amazing. So what I did this time, is on my first, so <laughs> the way I failed on this one is I actually mixed up my regular incubation box with 150 grams of vermiculite, 150 grams of water, and then I just dumped the springtails right on the top. And I think there wasn't enough, uh, the, the proper environment for the springtails to thrive, just dumped right in the box. So what I did this time is I actually took some potting soil. I went out to the barn and I found some potting soil that was like a tree and shrub potting soil and I know they'll actually live in potting soil because I actually have springtails up in my crested gecko enclosure and they let me tell you they actually clean up really well in kind of a potting soil type of mix with sphagnum moss on top so that's what I'm gonna try this time I'm actually gonna try uh, just taking the springtails, dump them right on the potting soil, and then I wanna put sphagnum moss on the top, and it seems like that would kind of simulate the environment that I have in my crested gecko setup. It's kind of an all natural setup where the, uh, 
the springtails are really thriving up there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle these right on top, right on the top here. Hopefully this actually works a little better than the last one. I think it actually will though. So I'm just gonna kind of even it out through the whole thing here. I haven't seen anyone else do this, so I don't know if uh, if people have been doing this, or I haven't seen any videos on doing springtails to try to save ball python eggs or anything like that. I do know this carbon's really messy. Look at how messy it is, which is pretty crazy. It gets on everything. So then what I was thinking about doing is actually taking this sphagnum moss and putting it on top gives it a kind of a, a really damp layer. So all this has been really wetted. So the potting soil, I got it really soaking wet, almost the consistency of like, almost like mud. It's, there's, there's a lot of water in that potting soil down at the bottom. Then I wanna put this on top to kinda of keep all the humidity in and give the springtails a little bit more to kind of, uh, to kind of colonize here. So that is about right. There's a lot of sphagnum moss, more than I thought there was gonna be in this box. So then what I was thinking is kind of having a little hole right in the middle, all the way down right to the springtails with just a thin layer of sphagnum moss right on the top between the sphagnum moss and then the charcoal underneath with the springtails. And then what I'm gonna do is I am not touching that egg. Let me tell you, I'm actually gonna lift that egg up and put it right here in this little micro habitat right in here. And if this works, it will be a miracle. <laughs> Let me tell you, as a matter of fact, if this works, probably what I'll do is I'll have some boxes like this set up already and in incubating in the incubator, all set up with the springtails. And every time I see a bad egg, I might actually take that egg and put it in a box that's already conditioned with the springtails and everything like that, which would be fantastic. So if this thing makes it, <laughs> It'll be pretty amazing indeed. So what I'm gonna do as far as the press and seal, so I'm gonna still use the press and seal over most of the box, but instead of completely covering the whole box, what I'm gonna do, you know, some people were kind of concerned about not enough oxygen for the springtail. So I'm gonna completely seal the whole thing except one little corner, and then just peel back one little corner on the press and seal so we have a little bit of breather for those springtails to make sure the springtails have enough air in there. So if this works, it will be a miracle. So this one, this one's, matter of fact, this one has quite a long time to go. This is actually, all right, so this is my Coral Glow crossed with my Lemon Blast number one on this one. And then this is actually supposed to hatch the 17th of July. It was laid on May 21st, only about a week ago. That's only a week, which is pretty nasty for only being a week old. So we'll, time will tell to see if this actually works. And if it does, hey, maybe it'll be big and take off and everybody will be using these springtail boxes for their bad ball python eggs. So that's pretty much it. Wish me luck. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.